wow, what an introduction. I mean, I think you said everything I'm going to say in my talk tonight, so I don't know what I would say. And I sound very impressive. I'll have to remind my wife how impressive I sound. <laughs> <laughs> Give her a little more <laughs> What's that? <laughs> oh, Ken, why don't you come up here and help me figure out where to do this? <laughs> I'm going to make this as brief as I've been told to make it. So, you guys, <laughs> history is proven. I've heard what history is proven. Nobody should fall asleep. The light shouldn't be too far dim. You guys have had really impressive speakers for the last, you know, decade, I suppose. Um, and I'm just, I'm, I'm really thrilled just to be here. I was really pleased and a little intimidated when Wade uh, asked me to do it because I know the people you've had here. So I, I count myself uh, very fortunate to be in that group. Uh, but I, a lot of people have much more eloquent things to say about the future of philately, the past of philately. So I decided I'll just dab into the industry. That's what I'm known for, I'm not just speaking. So I put together a little PowerPoint presentation just to show you a little bit of the inside way that stamp is designed. Um, I just assume everybody knows how that's done. Um, and really, people don't. Um, you know, I just, yeah, don't assume anything. So, uh, I do a lot of first, I cover cache designs now as a hobby, get my kids interested. Um, so without further ado, page down, right? Yeah, okay. And these are, um, put together just a little mix of some of the different types of stamps I design. Um, right, American series, Black Heritage series, commemoratives, Connecticut statehood, which was a real thrill for me since I grew up in Connecticut, still live here. Um, this, as uh, Steve said, is, was my first stamp design. Um, the funny thing, the funny story about this is my father had previously designed a Douglas MacArthur stamp. And when Jack Williams, the art director of Postal Service, called, um, I was just out of college, less than a year out of college, and he called, talked to my dad, and you know, it was a call from Jack. And so my father was assuming, okay, it's going to be a you know, stamp design for him. So, and Gordon, you probably remember this. Um, and so he talked to my dad for a couple of minutes, and then, hey, this, you know, this Chris there. And he's like, yeah, sure. And then he kind of figured it out, and then when he told me I was designing the Harry Truman stamp, that's the one stamp my father always wanted to design. <laughs> so he uh, MacArthur stamp. So when I got off the phone and told him, he's like, that's my stamp. That's mine. I need to call Jack back. But he was obviously thrilled. And this was the first cache I ever designed using the same image um, that I had used on the stamp. Uh, I'm going to briefly bring you through two stamp designs that I've done that were two sort of like my, my favorite working on. One was the George Meany stamp. Um, Meany had such a great, great face, real character to his face. So I was really excited when I got this assignment. And this is the final stamp, the final engraved stamp. Um, we started out with a, a number of sketches. Uh, they weren't a portrait, so we went straight with some different portraits. But different views, different angles. Um, the only thing that they told me, that, I mean, mean smoke was stogie, you know, the biggest stogie that anybody's ever smoked, supposedly all the time. And the Postal Service, even back then, said, no cigar, no half cigar. But my father taught me, you do what they want, and then you do what you want to. So I did it. So the stogie in, right there, he's holding the stogie. <laughs> But there's another very famous photograph of him. It's a portrait, and he's got this cigar, and there's all this smoke. And I sent the sketch to them of that, and Jack Williams, he wasn't happy. He just <laughs> didn't have, not even passing this on. Um, these were the two, out of those other sketches, these were the two that they kind of narrowed down um, the ones they liked uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, and then this came back to me after they said they liked those other two, that the one on the left was the one they wanted. But with all these red markings, you know, all of a sudden it was, yeah, we love it, but. Um, and they had all these different things, you know, I can't even really read them, but some I agreed with, some I totally disagreed with, like the, uh, they wanted the, the type running on the top. They wanted the blackness to go all the way up to the top and the type to kind of jump out in, uh, in white. And I told them that was crazy because I had mocked it up that way and just all you saw was George me. But all you saw was the name. You didn't really look at the portrait. So I won out in the end. Oh, um, this is the approved. This was the approved drawing. Um, and this is I don't know how they do it now, but this was a mock-up that each member of uh, I guess the Citizen Stamp Advisory Committee received 
it was a, an enlarged version, maybe 8 by 10, of the piece of artwork. And then it was a small version just to show how they would look at stamp size, which I always felt was really, really important. Because you can have a beautiful painting or a beautiful drawing, but when it's reduced down to stamp size, it can you know, look terrible. Um, and for some reason, the Postal Service really liked the drawings my father and I did because they could be reduced really small and still retain the essence of what you know, we were trying to convey. And this is another thing that the Citizen Stamp, the Advisory Committee received and the Art Directors received. It was a mock-up of how a stamp would look on an envelope because, again, you need to see how it's going to look on and then this is the a copy of the original drawing, the pencil drawing after the pencil sketches, and then the final <coughs> stamp. And you can see when the engravers get their handle on it, some engravers really follow the lines that I drew faithfully. And this is a great example of that. Uh, other ones interpret it more to their own style. So this one I was really pleased with. That's my one. Um, second one uh, is the 1989 Moon Landing stamp. As, as you mentioned, my father designed the original moon landing stamp, so this was kind of another one of those, hey, you know, my dad, hey, why, why didn't they call me for that one? Um, but he thought it was a great concept to have him designing the one in 69, and then having the son of the designers um, design it in 89, which, and I think the collectors really enjoyed that you know, historical con concept that you know, the father and son had done two different ones. So, I'm just going to bring you through. This was one of my favorite stamps to design for a lot of reasons. I, I really enjoy it. Space exploration. Um, my dad did design that stamp. And so I went through just so many different versions of sketches to get what they wanted. Uh, the, the concept was the original Millennium stamp in 69 had Neil Armstrong stepping on the moon. So for 1989, they wanted something different. Um, and in discussions over the phone, we came up with kind of planting the flag, the astronauts planting. Flag of the Moon, because that was another one of those seminal events. What's that? Anything? That's just that to do with that. Close what? <laughs> so these are three thumbnail sketches, which were just small, like three by four inch sketches. These are like three by four inch sketches, just to give the essence of the idea. Planting the flag. No real tear. You can see two of them. Um, so just to give the essence of the direction kind of that we were going in, um, then that was a vertical format. Didn't know whether it was going to be vertical or, or horizontal, so I produced these a little bit more finished sketches in more of a horizontal, but they could drop it vertically if they wanted to. So again, we kept going back and forth. Um, in these two examples, I left room for the type, put where I was envisioning the type to go. Uh, the one on the right, I was kind of envisioning moon landing. On the bottom there, maybe with some dates. Um, so again, just each sketch phase was just refining the concept that we were narrowing in on. Uh, and then did some color versions. Um, and so many people, you can't see it in these sketches, you see it in some other ones, but in the final painting, it was that blue, blue, blue sky, which should be black, theoretically. And the moon surface was a little bluish. And the reason we ended up, let's see, the reason we ended up doing that was because this was supposed to be used on priority mail envelopes. And I don't know who it was that the Postal Service mentioned to me that we need to have those colors because the thought was to put it on priority mail envelopes. Um, so we kind of went with sort of a bluer theme. Um, you can see kind of that bluish in the, in the ground. This is the next phase where we're really going into detail where the type might go, much more finished drawing, um, <coughs> trying maybe one astronaut on the, on the right, which I knew Buzz Aldrin wouldn't like because you know, he wasn't on the first one, so we should get him in on the second one. My father actually said, i got to get Buzz in on the second one because you know, he was upset about the first one. Uh, that's true. Um, on the left is the final approved version. On the right is uh, a, a image of the actual painting, the actual final painting. You can see that kind of blue sky, a little hint of blue in the uh, in the moon surface. Um, and at that point, we kind of got they got the plus service decided we didn't need to say 20th anniversary, we didn't need to say moon landing. Um, people would just get the idea. Let's just do a nice big stamp, um, and obviously it's quick in the flag on the moon. Um, again, on the left is the finished painting, and on the right is the actual stamp after the engravers. I believe 
it was in the the black was engraved, um, and the, the blue was not. Uh, it was a combination, I believe, of the two. So that was kind of uh, interesting. Um, and the first day ceremony was just spectacular. It was at the National Air and Space Museum, and it, was, you know, it wasn't just the issuance of the stamp. It was the 20th anniversary of the moon landing. Um, there was a big like party the night before, and I met like every astronaut, you know, who walked on the moon, who you know was in the program. Um, and today, I collect C76, but I also collect like, astronaut autograph covers. And I have a stack of first day covers in my pockets at night. I didn't even think to ask anyone. Oh, nice to meet you, Mr. Armstrong. I really know. I was really excited. I didn't even think to put everybody I met. The only person who I got um, to sign something was uh, Jack Lausma, who was a uh, space shuttle astronaut. Uh, and I went to the University of Michigan. He went to the University of Michigan. So I said, oh, hey, I should get his autograph. Sorry. Instead of Neil Armstrong, I got Jack Lee. <laughs> and Alexei Leonov, who was the first man um, to walk in space, the, the Russian cosmonaut, I asked him to sign one. And he looked at it and he said, who is this? And I said, I'm Chris Kelly, the designer of the stamp. He said, you're not Paul Kelly. And I said, no, I'm not, because he knew my father um, from years before when my father went to Russia with the uh, Apollo Soyuz astronauts when they were training. He goes, you're not Paul Kelly. And I said, could you sign it? Yes, I will sign it. But when your father comes, he should sign it too. So I don't think that Leonard really shouldn't sign it because he's not on it. My father shouldn't sign it because it's not his stamp design. It. It's kind of funny. So I have that. I still have that one. Um, and then this is the final poster stand after, after it was uh, engraved. Um, and then this was what my dad always taught me. During that whole sketch phase, I talked to my dad, he and I talked about some other concepts, some alternate concepts. You give them exactly what they're looking for, but then other things that you may have an idea of, maybe they haven't even thought of. So we came up with this kind of stamp on stamp concept where we would use the moon landing stamp from 1969 as the design. So these were three versions um, of that kind of concept because it is—it's an iconic image. Everybody knows that. Everybody probably has one. The postman, the new postmaster of Hartford today, when she was sworn in, inside of her Bible, her grandmother's Bible, I think. Yeah, there was a C-76 first man with a stamp inside there. So, um, and then this was another alternate. Uh, my father had done back in the 19, late 1969, after Armstrong walked on the moon, he had done a large four by eight foot painting um, of Armstrong with all this darkness. Um, and so they used that as the basis for this, knowing again that they wanted the planting of the, the, the flag, but you know, maybe they liked this idea too. And then for the 25th anniversary, I sent them very similar sketches thinking it would make a great image, but they didn't go for it then. <laughs> maybe for the 50th anniversary. And this is actually that painting of my father's. Um, I mocked that up a little bit as a, as a um, stamp, but there's like another, the, the same amount of space is all the way on the other side, it's just a blackness, it's a really awesome image, but not for a um, And then 1989, after I did uh, design the stamps, after it came out, I did these, I'd never done hand-drawn first day covers, so I did these original drawings on first day covers, um, really just did them for family, friends. Um, it, was, it was a really good, interesting experience. My father had done that previously, the 1969 moon landing stamp, dozens and dozens of these quick drawings on, on covers of just beautiful, original artwork. Um, so these are some that I did for the, um, the anniversary. And this is my first cache design. When my dad was designing a stamp on the right, that's what I was doing. <laughs> so, and believe it or not, it was on a napkin. My mother saved the napkin. And that yellow is not like food or anything, it's the uh, glue that we used to, to glue things on the case. But that's my first uh, cache design. I came across, after my mom died and we were going through a lot of things in the house, I came across a whole bunch of other space um, drawings that I had done back then, which is really interesting since you know, I have a passion for it now. So that was my first cache design. Um, and then while I was doing a, a lot of stamp designing for the US and other countries, I was also a couple years after, maybe a year after I designed that Harry Truman stamp, uh, the president of Fleetwood, um, uh, first day cover company, gave me a call. Again, my father answered the phone, thought it was for him. <laughs> um, I should have had him as my secretary. And hey, can I talk to Chris? And it turns out, you know, I had sent him a portfolio, and they were, it was right 
place, right time. They were looking for a young artist because a lot of their artists were like my father's age at the time and starting to phase out of um, illustration. And so I came along at a perfect time. They were looking for a style similar to mine. And I, from the mid 80s to the you know, 2000, um, I designed hundreds of first day cover cachets for Fleetwood as a freelance illustrator. Um, they didn't hire anybody, but it was wonderful. And I got such a good relationship with them that the Postal Service would give out the, the next year's program, and I could call them and say, hey, I really want to work on World War II. I want to work on carousel horses. Um, and they'd give me some real, really choice assignments to work on. So it was really thrilling. Um, and then the difference between, I just put this in here because the difference between working for Postal Service and working for Fleetwood, Postal Service went through that whole sketch phase. Fleetwood set the contract, and the contract had the dated to do, which was, turned out, the most important thing. That's what they wanted, because they were on schedule. But they were going to pay for it, and the size. They didn't want to see sketches. They didn't need to see sketches. They didn't know what, or what you're doing, because their philosophy was, we're choosing this artist, because we know we're going to like what they do, which was just a dream, because you yeah, didn't have to go through a big sketch. So this is my sketch. <laughs> didn't do one. <laughs> it was just, that's the square that I had to fill in, and then that's basically the painting I ended up doing for that great World War II series that was 50 stars. Um, and then there's the first day cover that, uh, that my painting was on. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, so we got a, these were actually, when they did want some sketches for Fleetwood, I did a couple sketches for Frank Lloyd Wright. It was in that Celebrate the Century series. Um, they didn't know what direction they wanted to go with the stamp. They wanted one of his buildings, but I wanted his portrait, so we kind of merged the two. And then there's the final version of that. That was one of the few times when they really asked if want to see some sketches. Um, and then this, this is what I call using familiar faces. As an illustrator, you kind of go, everybody knows Norman Rockwell. Norman Rockwell used the, you know, the, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, the kid next door, everybody you know, on his paintings. And every illustrator says, when you, when you do something realistic, you know, call a modeling agency and really hire you know, models because you want real people. I mean, every face in this room, when I was an illustrator, I could have used. I'll give you a perfect example. This is United We Stand for the 9-11 stand. Okay. The woman who works at the photo lab, where I got my photos. A friend of mine who was in the army at the time. A friend of mine's brother who was a United pilot. My brother-in-law, <laughs> girlfriend, my mailman who's now my dog walker and house sitter when I'm away. Um, father of the guy across the street. Friend, brother, sister-in-law, my son, my wife, a fireman in my town, my nephew, my mother. Um, woman we know, the guy who owned the gas station, and another friend. So, <laughs> in so many instances, we want people real faces, not model faces. So, if I was still an illustrator, I'd have my camera here just in case I'd be taking some pictures of people. Um, and then this is I kind of call Let's All Go to Do Research. I love, love research. I love working on historical. Uh, pieces of artwork like the World War II, like Celebrated Century. This is a great example. The Federated States of Micronesia wanted to issue a series of, I think it was 12 coral reef fish stamps. They asked me to do it. Well, I figured, I just got certified diving. So I figured, what well, better time than to go on a research trip? And so I spent the, and no, it's a tax write off right now, I will say. <laughs> um, I went for a month. All throughout the islands of Micronesia, Marshall Islands, Micronesia, diving. I go from Truck Lagoon, all these wow. World War II wrecks, I mean, every place. It was an amazing, amazing trip. And I don't know if they still have it, but Continental Micro Air Micronesia was the name of the Continental. And you could you could pay one price for your round trip, and you could stop at up to like four or five different islands and spend at least like four or five days if you wanted to. So I just bounced around and bounced around doing my. <laughs> so that was that. Um, this is sort of interesting, kind of like with the reptiles and amphibian stamps that were issued today with uh, the Marshall Islands. I did this painting of an Indian headdress for Fleetwood for a first day cover. They own the rights to all the artwork any of their artists ever did. The rights, the original artwork they own. So Fleetwood has a relationship with France, the Marshall Islands, and a number of uh, Canada, a number of other um, countries. And they have you, they give a lot of times the artwork to the Marshall Islands to use for first day, for stamps. 
So the bottom, the top one is the Fleetwood First Day cover design, and then last year they issued Marshall Allen's Indian headdresses here. Remember Indian headdresses, and they used my artwork on the, uh, the stamp, and I used it on the cachet. Interesting. Um, and I used it on the cachet, and like a lot of people know, we sell these covers, all these Marshall Allen's covers. There's a couple of home for homes for girls in Peru that we uh, we give the proceeds to. Um, so it's a second life for a lot of things I've done, a lot of others. Yeah. Marshall Island on the stamp. There's only with a single L there, but it's only there. It's two. It's two. Okay. It's always somebody who wants to point something out. <laughs> and usually you're probably right. Um, and then this is just some some of the caches I've been doing now. I'm not an illustrator anymore, um, but my kids are starting to get. I have a 13 year old, and a 10 year old. They're starting to get interested in stamp collecting. My daughter, my 10 year old, does caches. She does really really nice caches. Really feels passionate about it after we're talking. She's more passionate though about selling them. Um, <laughs> but she enjoys doing them, but she really likes to sell them. Um, so I'm continuing just doing some caches kind of as a hobby. Um, I, I enjoy it. I can't kind of get it out. Uh, so these are just a variety of things that I've done recently over the last three, four years. Um, again, these are just a couple uh, couple, couple cache designs I've done because I enjoy it. Um, and this was uh, is a photograph from the Marshall Islands um, first day ceremony today. Uh, and I put this in here just to see, you know, we have fun. I like to have fun in Palakwe, and that's why I come to the show. That's why we do the ceremonies. And this one was a little bit more fun than the normal one. There were, what, three first day ceremonies today? Nothing like this one. You can see there's a bunch of terrariums in the foreground. And the guy to the right is Adam Harris. He and his father own a pet store in Avon, Connecticut. Contacted him, sent him images of what the stamps looked like. He said, yeah, I've got some of those. I said, could you bring them? He said, absolutely. So he gave me a call today and said, I'm at the loading dock. Great. So we went over there, and this is how you have fun in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> this is a perfect example of how Ken Martin will do whatever it takes. <laughs> There's a python wrapped around my neck and then literally wrapped around his neck. <laughs> He's got a bow constrictor that's going behind him here. And you can't really see that well, but this is a <laughs> lizard. Adam put on Ken's shoulder and that thing immediately crawled up across his glasses and planted itself on his <laughs> So, Ken Martin. That's all I got for you. Did I? Good timing? Perfect. Okay. Nobody fell asleep? <laughs> Herb, yes? I just have a question for Chris. Chris, please arise. You have a question. Yes. How long does it take for you to get the concept of the stamp from, from the person that wants it mm -hmm. to finishing it? I will give you the answer that my father always gave. A lifetime of experience. <laughs> it depends. I mean, her puzzle service is a perfect example. Moon landing stamp, I really wanted to delve into the sketch phase because I'm really into it. Other ones, Harry Truman, perfect example. I did one quick sketch, they loved it, I did the drawing, and that was it. So it really depends. It could be quick. You're like a plant. You know, the only, the only person I <laughs> could ask it any time. Well, thanks, Chris. For Thank you. A very entertaining talk. And, you know, for your continued support of our hobby, we appreciate that very, very much.